Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah. So let's get started. Okay. Um, so thank you very much for joining our today's session. Um, today we will go over the uh, chapter two of um, text mining with R. And the chapter two is basically um, talk about uh, sentiment analysis in tidy way. So um, in this chapter, we'll see how we can use tidy text approach to the sentiment analysis. And also we we'll learn a lot about um, different kind of sentiment lexicons available mm -hmm. and how to use word cloud. So yeah, so that is it. Right, so um, when we talk about sentiment analysis, generally there are two ways to do sentiment analysis. Um, the first one is lexicon-based sentiment analysis and the second one is machine learning based. So the lexicon-based sentiment analysis involves using uh, lexicons, which are basically dictionary with um, kind of interpretation of each word. If we have a word so that is negative or positive, that is called lexicons. And we have a machine learning based approach, um, which actually um, now that is uh, the approach that is being used um, mostly because it achieved better performance in a set of deep learning model. But one good thing with lexicon based approach is that they have interpretable results. So what I mean by that, if you are given a sentence, this is a good man. So lexicon based, uh, you will always know what contributes to something that is positive, what contributes to something that is negative. Um, so in some field, we need um, such kind of interpretability. For example, in medical field, we need some kind of such kind of interpretability. But in some other field, you don't need to. Uh, have such kind of stuff. So uh, any, they need performance in that way. So that's two ways uh, basically to do sentiment analysis, but this book actually employ the first method, which is lexicon based. So in tidy text, um, we use lexicons to do sentiment analysis. So this is basically summarize what, um, um, how tidy text is being used to do sentiment analysis. So given a text data, um, so, what you can do when you are given a data, you need to post on nested data and the tokens, as we have seen last week, um, that uh, given a text, when we are nested into tokens, we have tokens word by word, um, that is tidy text. Now, using that, what you can do is we, given a sentiment lexicon, which I say a dictionary, we can use an inner join, which is basically find um, what is um, in the text, do we have a word that appear in the lexicon? If that word appears, then it grabs that word and uh, we summarize and sum the number. So given a sentence, for example, I love this house, it's beautiful. Now, the lexicon based sentiment analysis, what it does basically is look up these words, which word among this sentence is present in our dictionary. If this word grab them and um, identify are they positive or negative, then classify accordingly. So that's basically what uh, lexicon based sentiment analysis. So let's see how we can use um, sentiment uh, analysis with um, lexicons. Right. So, yes, I have said sentiment lexicon are basically dictionary with uh, semantic orientation. So when we say semantic orientation, we mean like um, uh, given a word, what is the semantic orientation? Like, is it positive or negative? Um, sometimes some lexicons, they have um, kind of binary, like Billy lexicon is positive and negative. And uh, NRC, it does have many categories, uh, which is sometimes called emotion. Uh, it does have, I think, six classes or eight. And Affin is lexicon has a running uh, numbers from minus five to five, depending on the intensity of the word. For example, when we have bad, um, it may have, um, or worst, it may have minus five, and excellent, it can have five. So the intensity is what matters. So these lexicon also are categorized into what we call general sentiment lexicon. So this lexicon, like being up in NRC, they are called general sentiment lexicon because they are not specific to the domain, you can apply them. But however, general sentiment lexicon, they are not parted in many domains, for example, um, so when you take, for example, um, uh, the word, for example, um, increasing, uh, when you say the economy is increasing uh, in economic domain, this is something 
good. But when you say um, the disease is increasing, so in may, maybe medical field, this is negative. So what this is saying is that um, some words differ in different domains. So general sentiment lexicon are not usually good to apply to every domain. So sometimes you need to use domain specific lexicons. But the problem with domain specific lexicon is that you cannot develop sentiment lexicon for each domain because they are manually intensive to do because um, how sentiment lexicon are developed is given a large corpus, people are given that corpus, they annotate it. So for example, um, one of the tasks we are doing right now with my colleagues is um, creating um, tweet corpus for sentiment analysis. So given tweet like 20,000, we'll give them each tweet, identify a word in this. So you can see this is lab, something laborious because for each domain, medicine, economy, when you want to do something. So this means that domain specific sentiment lexicon performs better but difficult to generate. And one of the uh, best way now, this domain specific lexicon, there are approaches that we uh, develop them automatically. So you don't need to uh, manually develop them, uh, annotate them, you can actually uh, develop, uh, develop them automatically. So one of the way, is using word embedding. So word embedding using a neural approach allow inducing domain specific lexicons or general lexicon automatically. So people need not to do manual annotation. However, manual annotation is always better than domain specific. Um, manual annotation is always better than uh, manual uh, automatic approach. And also there is one thing, lexicon can be unigram or ungram. So all these ones, I think they are unigram. So they only have what like good, bad, excellent, um, but they don't have very good, very excellent. So these are what we call intensifier. So this means that uh, if we are using sentiment analysis with this lexicon, they cannot deal with this kind of intensification. Um, extremely good. Uh, so this lexicon, the uh, unigram, uh, but some lexicon also can contain multiple words. Um, so there is also some issue with uh, text with many paragraphs. So if you have a text that is large enough, um, so sometimes the positive and negative can cancel each other and it become uh, somehow uh, neutral. Um, so, so also here, how this lexicon are created, um, crowdsourcing. So crowdsourcing is like, um, you just, uh, there are many crowdsourcing um, in this nowadays, you just employ, you don't know people, um, you just say, okay, I want to give people to it to annotate it into positive, negative. You just go to crowdsourcing uh, website and upload your data, pay, and people around the world can go and annotate this data. So that's one way. Uh, but it's uh, uh, all the authors of the lexicon can create it. So all this below NRC and Affin have been created using crowdsourcing. Um, so before we move on, any question? Right. Okay, so let's go on. So um, now we have seen these three lexicons. Um, let's see them example. Um, so this is the um, Affin lexicon. Uh, as we can see here, we have the word abandon and it's minus two. So this is the lexicon we have um, below, um, which actually um, binary, um, we have positive and negative. And also we have NRC um, emotion lexicons. Uh, so the NRC, I'm not sure, sure. Um, I think um, there is an issue with um, tidy text. Um, uh, I, actually, they removed this from tidy text package. Uh, so when you try to get, uh, get sentiment uh, NRC, you will not be able to retrieve it. Um, does anybody encounter that? So for example, from below, you can get the lexicon. For Appin, you can get the lexicon, but for NRC, you cannot get that. I, I, I think um, Julia Silge had a blog post in her website, in her blog, talking about the, the, the author, um, at, that, um, uh, something about, uh, is it private, not privacy? Um, but they just remove it from the package, I guess. Um, does anybody add it here? No, I've only... 
actually you need to install another package called mm -hmm. uh, uh, text, text, like, uh, text, text data. data. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, text data is the package that Julia figured that you need to install um, so that you can actually have access to that. But um, yeah. I, yeah, but I also download the um, motion lexicon, I guess, from the website owner. Um, yeah. So I think, um, yeah. NRC. Yeah. Okay. So this is the NRC. Um, uh, so it has some kind of sentiment and some word. I don't know what them. So I use that and grab them. So this is the uh, text data. Oh, there is another packet called lexicon. Mm. And this package called lexicon contains many uh, sentiment lexicon in it. Um, it's by Tidely um, Tinker or something like that. I don't know. So this lexicon is a package with many different kind of sentiment, even head speech, many, many, many things. Um, so um, you can look at it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that is it. Uh, any question before we continue? Hmm. All right. Okay, so now we have seen different kind of sentiment lexicon. So let's see how we can apply this sentiment lexicon to do sentiment analysis. Um, so one good thing with tidy approach is um, when you have your data in tidy form, then you are ready to do sentiment analysis. We just in a join. Um, so this turns the um, the tax of text mining into tidy data analysis because when you just put your data or text into tidy format, all you need to do is um, somehow kind of inner join um, and anti join to remove stop words. So we have a book from Austin Bulls. Um, we were going to use this book to do some chain analysis, uh, uh, different books. So we have different kind of books. Um, one of them is Sen and Sensibility. We can see here this is the title, um, right? Um, we can see here we actually um, have um, for each text, we put a line number. So here we have one line three and uh, for each chapter, for example, here is chapter zero because this is just the headings. Um, so it starts from chapter one, we have, um, 10. Uh, so you can see where we have line 10, we have chapter one. So here. And we now change the everything into tidy form. And we use on next token. So every word in the books are now here. So this is the book, this is the line number, and this is the words in the uh, book. And these are the chapters. Now we are good to go. Um, our data is now in tidy format. And what else remains is just to use inner join um, to use our uh, to use sentiment analysis. Right, so here the first one we want to use um, NRC because um, we want to grab only the word join, uh, something that is classified as join. So I grab my um, NRC lexicons and uh, I filter the words that are categorized as join. So for example, oh good. Um, it abandoned is this joy? Yeah. I, I don't know. Is this one correct? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I wouldn't necessarily put abandonment as joyful. Yeah. I'm not maybe, sure. Yeah, maybe if you install the tidy data package and then uh, yeah. using the dead NRC data set for mm -hmm. the analysis, mm. maybe you got a different result. Yeah, maybe, I guess. Maybe this one, I'm, I, uh, maybe, maybe because- it shouldn't um, be, because either way, it's a, it, you're supposed to get kind of similar results, no? I don't know. Um, because like um, this is the, because the uh, NRC is of different versions. So I was like using the, um, the updated version, which is version 9.2. I'm not sure anyway. Um, yeah. So, um, so basically using inner join with the uh, NRC joy, uh, we can see we have this stuff. 
Yeah, I think um, I even look at it. I think um, um, it's not actually um, the same um, with the book, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, so you can see some of the words, dear, good, and um, yeah. So this is basically um, how we can do sentiment analysis. We just use inner join as how we turn our text into um, tidy because, and also here we only print out the book for Emma. So we are not using all the book. Yeah. All right, can we move on any question? Okay. I put card link in the chat, by the way, on the GitHub issue about the like, NRC lexicon. Mm -hmm. So they remove, uh, if you use the um, text data package and use yeah. the lexicon NRC greed equals true. Okay, right. Yeah, because I was like looking, because I know about the remove it, but I was like, oh, where could I find it? And uh, I don't know. All right, so this section examine how sentiment changes in you know, each novel. So they have different novels, I think three. Um, so they examine how the sentiments um, changes in the, each one. So here is basically the um, tidy books and uh, we unmask the tokens. And here we have the word and these are the book. Um, so we have a different category of the book. And here, what we do is, um, we have for each book, we count the number of negative positive words in each book. So for example, I mean, in, in, in each index, and so here we have number of negative, we have positive, and we um, sum these ones, like if this is negative, 16 and 32 as positive, then we have the sentiment is 16, which is positive. So this is how they find the sentiment. Um, so we can see this one, we can plot them. Uh, all this one, number one, number two, this one, this book, this book, this book. So yeah, it shows um, the sentiment. Uh, and one interesting thing is like, it looks like the plot, they are all the same. I don't know, like the sentiment across the book is looking somehow, um, it correlates, is that right? Yeah, it is actually, According to the book, the book yeah. says it is actually they calculate the the number of word frequency related to the emotion mm -hmm. words based on the every 80, 80 line of the text. Mm -hmm. That eighty nine is a kind of a kind of a buffer for mm -hmm. the their uh, for the collecting the those words. Because mm -hmm. that index number actually stands for the every so index zero is the the first first eighty nines of the yeah. that novel, and mm -hmm. then and then next the index number one is the the second eighty nine and so on. Mm -hmm. So that means zero zero to one fifty is the kind of an index means that there is uh, maybe how many like uh, one one hundred eighty multiplied by by 80 means how many? 12, uh, 12,000, 12,000 number of line actually. But, mm. but the, you know, what the indexing means is uh, according to the code, uh, the, the word frequency uh, you want to collect is uh, every 89. You just, every 89 is a kind of a unit of analysis for the mm -hmm. text. So so every 89 collect all those emotional words and then uh, calculating the frequency and then and then calculate the differences between the positive and negative. That's the yeah. how this one goes and then uh, yeah. that flood actually saying that is the uh, most of the Jane Austen novel tends to be very positive kind of uh, mm -hmm. feeling throughout mm -hmm. the, yeah. their her her writing. Style. Yeah, yeah. Um, so also, what about Emma? Also looks somehow positive, right? Yeah, very hard, positive, and then uh, maybe somewhat a little bit negative pattern has find mm. it at the end of the the novel. Mm -hmm. But maybe 
if you can set up the maybe different line line as a unit, like a, yeah, instead yeah. of the saying the line eight, line eighty, yeah, maybe if you can say line forty, then might be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. All right. So um, let's go to the next one. Um, so the next section is comparing um, three dictionaries. So one good thing is like lexicon, they have different quality. So um, for example, you may take um, NRC or you may take uh, value. You can do a sentiment analysis, but um, each one has its own different quality. So one good thing is um, some lexicon are manually annotated and some they are automatic. So uh, for example, NRC, uh, manually annotated, I guess. In the loop, I guess also they are manually annotated. So when you have a lexicon that is automatically developed, so it is less, um, uh, the quality, it is quality is not that good compared to ones that are manually annotated. And today, all this, most, mostly the lexicon are automatically induced. Um, so here, it, uh, this section is trying to compare the, um, these dictionaries and see how they perform. So I think for me, I only use the two um, because I was not able to do with the, uh, um, the NRC. So here is the book uh, we had, um, book and the words and the chapter they belong and the line number. And here we have a pin um, where we um, basically um, get this book, pride and pride to that, this book. And we um, have in a, join with the affine lexicon and um, we basically sum the value the same thing with um uh below uh, we did the same and now here we basically um bind all this one and plug them so we can see here we have also the affine and below and you can see here, it seems like they have the same shape as well. Uh, so uh, you can see the lexicon for coefficient sentiment gives results that are different in an absolute set, but have similar relative trajectory through the novel. So um, even though we use two different lexicon, we use affine and below, uh, we can see actually they are having the same kind of trajectory. But here I can see what happens here. Um, I don't know what happens here, like um, in uh, below, uh, we have this down negative, but here in affine, we don't have. I don't know what happens, but in all other cases, it looks like, um, yeah. So um, always uh, for me, um, if you want to use sentiment lexicon, um, is to, if there is domain specific lexicon, what you are working on, then use the domain uh, lexicon. Uh, but if there isn't anyone, you can uh, use the general one or, yeah, so that's it. So as we can see, all these one are general lexicon, so they perform closely related. But if we have um, maybe um, lexicons that are basically for books only, they may perform or outperform this general lexicon. Right, that is it. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. So here, most common positive and negative words. So here is trying to uh, look at how can we grab um, uh, most negative or positive words from the uh, books. Okay, so here it says one other advantage of having the data frame with both sentiment and word is that we can analyze word count that contribute to each sentiment. So here what is happening is um, we actually um, take these books and we use inner join and with Bing to um, extract the sentiment and we count. And this is the result the count. So here we have miss, well, good, um, the count for each one. So here we can see that we have the word miss, um, which shows a negative. And above the books made mention on something related to that, that um, it is not actually um, a miss 
right? I cannot actually remember on top of my head what it says. The book said why Miss is here. Can someone um, remember that? Because we can see Miss, uh, even though Miss, I think, is negative, right? But um, from the book, so I maybe. Think, yeah, so like if you miss something, it's usually it's negative, usually right? corresponding with a negative okay. sentiment. But mm -hmm. in the book, I believe Mrs. used as like Miss Emma or whatever. Okay. <laughs> like, right. You know what I mean? As a prefix. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is a perfect example of what I was telling you that um, general lexicon may not work as well. So if we have a lexicon that it is domain is books, then me sometimes will be given because it will not be considered because like when the, the um, this lexicons was developed, um, which lexicon is that NRS belief? So when this lexicon was developed, for example, is um, um, maybe for, uh, because they say it's general, so maybe they can use for movie, uh, for review. Uh, uh, someone can say, I, 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 I missed my wallet, or I missed something like that, which is negative. So it's always annotated as negative. But when, um, for example, they want to develop a lexicon for books, now when people are given miss, miss, so, so, miss, so, so, miss, so, so, they will not annotate miss as negative. So you see, like, uh, this is domain dependent. So that's why lexicons are domain dependent. And so one we need to work with the, um, so this is actually what happened. The miss is the domain of the book, miss is not negative, but rather some kind of um, stuff like that. So but what I'm thinking, mm -hmm. Sam, what I'm thinking, sorry, is that even if it was domain specific, miss is a, yeah. one of those words that is very general. I think it would still be negative. Mm -hmm. I feel like the only way that you would maybe be able to distinguish if you weren't familiar with the subject matter and that no, and you knew that they were referring to mm -hmm. yeah. um, Miss is that if you did, if she didn't use the, the stringer function to lower, because in the books, they always refer to like Miss Ashley, like, or mm -hmm. Miss Emma, whatever, mm -hmm. in capital letters. It would, it would be capitalized, right? Okay, okay. So M-I-S-S. -S. Mm -hmm. And so I maybe that would have, if you're not, maybe if not a, a yeah. lexicon that's going to solve, dis distinguish these kind of uh, findings, it would probably be in the, the way it's written. Mm. So you know here, I mean? yeah, yeah. So here it's not- Even in names, by the way. So, so I don't know. I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but you know, you know, there's some very um, there's some names that could be objects or things, you know, that are could be conflated as not what they are. And if they're mentioned a lot, as clearly as it is here, one thousand eight hundred and fifty-five mm -hmm. times, <laughs> then yeah. you would think that it you could get the wrong inference. Yeah. So actually, miss here is not perfect example, but for example, when we have like a, the economy is growing, the economy is growing. So we can see here in uh, finance field, the economy is growing. But when we say in the uh, I mean medical field, the tumor is growing. Um, the, you know, so you see all these two in some sense they are actually different direction, and so. Um, this may not be I, I mean it, yeah so in essence this is a field of research um uh, that sentiment lexicons and they are not domain dependent in fact this is a uh, uh, field of research uh, related to that so um yeah so um that's that and um, floating floating this one we can see which one has most negative which one has most um, one good way we can see actually uh, this lexicon because they are unigram, but sometimes what actually may help is um, bigram. So bigram, if you have missed so so, if you have missed something, so that would not count as negative. So bigram can help, but also now with uh, word embeddings and and also contextual word embedding, they take the context. So if you are doing sentiment analysis, because this as I told you, the lexicon based sentiment analysis. Um, um, it doesn't take context and uh, also it doesn't consider 
for example, negation and um, intensifier, very good, excellent, um, very bad. And so all these ones I missed. Uh, um, so um, contextual, uh, like deep learning, they, um, they learn this automatically and they will not classify miss even if it is attached with some miss so so miss so so it will not classify think of it as negative so they will learn this given a lot of data right and so, have you done have you dabbled in in contextual yeah language context processing? sorry in general and have you dabbled with contextual language processing in general yeah <clears throat> or Conte, one one of you because i'm actually I'm actually just getting started, hence why I'm ah. here. I mean, I know how ah. to, I've done sentiment analysis before. I've read, I've kind of skimmed this book already, but I'm looking for some good resources to start. Yeah, but more I, advanced. Yeah, the thing is uh, actually, actually, uh, I what I want to say about the sentiment analysis, especially uh, the chapter in this book, is a very very basic one, and then, yeah. So another another sentiment analysis actually when you're looking at looking through the code in the chapter two, you will find that uh, every code has uh, just used the text as it is, and then the thing is, the reason why the thing is that is uh, maybe we don't have to worry about the removing any kind of uh, redundant words because we just only focusing on the, those kind of words, and then also. Recently, we actually do not use uh, just a unigram, like a one word type of the word frequency for the sentiment analysis. Instead, actually, this will briefly mention about that one kind of things in the, in the page 27. But uh, what we wanted to do is uh, using this one as a kind of a low data and then we actually looking at uh, this kind of a uh, contextual meaning of the each sentiment word by the sentence or the, by the pair. And then based on the, cause of, for example, maybe when you say the, uh, when you say the kind of uh, some word is in the middle of the sentence and then uh, what, what the algorithm does is the, that algorithm actually looking to the other words within the test sentence and then evaluate the other words as a weight. And then that weights, different weight pattern can be determined that that hate emotional feeling of the things. Maybe I can share the, my screenshot if you want me to do it. But do you want, is it okay to do that? Or? Yeah, sure. Maybe. Maybe I can show you my example about the, uh, uh, okay, hold on. Yeah. This is a kind of like an example about the sentiment. You can call it in R, there is a package called, called polarity package, okay? So green one, green one represents someone positive and red one represents someone negative. So actually using the kind of a, looking at the, this kind of a sentiment by, by the sentence or paragraphs, you can check the, there is a overall, overall pattern is the plus two, zero, plus point two, point two one four kind of things. And then 140, or maybe yeah, here is the negative kind of things. So a lot of red sign here. So you can you can do these things for by using the yes polarity. Yeah. So you can do those things by using the more for more advanced sentiment analysis. So recently. We actually using the, those lexicon, but based on the their lexicons, actually what, what the text mining analysis, advanced text mining analysis does is, for example, there is a word called miss, 
as a as a term within the death sentence. And then what what algorithm does is the algorithm catches the sentence around the dead words and then collect the other words nearby the dead words. And then if the, there is a negative surroundings nearby the dead words, that determines the sentiment score of the dead exact words, like a, like a void and solid kind of a approach, okay? Mm. That's the how the sentiment analysis can do, maybe more advanced kind of things. But still, there is a still kind of a lot of caveats because uh, the Unigram approaches still have a kind of a problem with there. There are a lot of terms which has uh, multiple meanings, both positive and negative. Even if we can look at the sentences, it's, it is uh, sometimes very hard to catch that words is a positive and negative. But anyway, by analyzing the surrounding terms, of that, that term to, for analysis, we can determine the sentiment, degree of the sentiment with that words by analyzing the surroundings as a context. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the advanced one, yeah. but it doesn't mention, explain this dead one in here because it is a little bit complicated. So. Thanks mm. for then, the explanation and the demo you're sharing. Oh, that was... All right. Okay. Yeah. So, Just go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Uh, okay. Hmm. No, I'm not sharing the correct one. I don't know where my screen goes. Uh, okay. Oh, come on, let's come on positive. All right. So uh, I was still here since morning, I think. Uh, since 8 or 9 on this <laughs> evening. Oh, still. All right. Okay. So, yeah, thank you for the contribution. So, as I've said, um, uh, um, nowadays, um, for this task for sentiment analysis and this natural language processing, um, one sure way that bit other approach is using um, NLP approach that go, um, unfortunately they are mostly with um, Python community, such as hugging face transformers. So these are the hands down approach that beats um, current anything state of the art when you're talking about state of the art of NLP and then transformers are the state of the art. They do everything, uh, yeah. So let's move on. Um, I think, um, okay. So here we can see we have this miss, but um, when you have a domain knowledge and you identify that something is not um, within your reach, it's not usable, then you can remove it, you can add it to a, as a custom software. So here we create a custom software and merge it with the existing software dictionary. And now here we can see we have now custom stop word. We have a miss in the custom stop word. And now we can regenerate this plot with using anti join to remove the custom stop word, which is the word miss. We can remove it and you can see our plot is now um, negative and positive and as we supposed to see them. Um, so this is actually, um, um, yeah. Right, okay, then finally here we have word cloud, which actually allow us to see the, um, uh, the words that have been used in the book. So here is basically using, uh, removing the stop words, which are words that um, we saw last week uh, that appears uh, most common in our daily activities that does not contribute quite often. So interestingly, I use this top word, uh, for example, for my language. Um, I used it uh, to get to it from Twitter and I had to you know, create top words for my language uh, because there isn't one available. Um, and um, I use one technique here. If we go, I think chapter three or four, that's where I 
and learn how to use them and so forth. Right. So this also um, is basically using this uh, word cloud to create a word trap of the web. Um, looking at unit beyond just words. So this is actually telling us that the unigram cannot handle negation and any other noise um, that may actually uh, can be uh, uh, sent in. For example, I'm not having a good day, which is, uh, so it say that some other packages in R um, can handle this kind of um, issue like core NLP and they can handle this one. So, um, I have not actually explored them. Um, um, so here is basically trying to uh, also work toward um, trying to find uh, words that uh, which chapter in the book is basically having the most negative word. And here we have like um, in this book, chapter for three, it does have negative word 161 chapter, um, uh, chapter four and negative word. And now they put them. So this uh, chapter with Mossad was an issue. Um, uh, so that is um, what I have today. Any question? <laughs> ah, okay. So um, Leila, is, um, you're talking about uh, reticulate to do. You no, know, what I mean by that is, um, for example, the implementation of um, the hugging face transformers, they are all in Python. So that's what I mean. Uh, oh, the, those specific transformers, yeah. yeah. I was actually just looking at, into it today. They have the demos that you can- Which, um, which one? Which one? The hugging, the hugging uh, face transformers. Ah, uh, okay. You can, um, I can put the link. I was okay. it today. I don't know if you know okay. what I'm talking about, but you can type, you know, and then, it, you know, it wasn't that great. <laughs> Mm. I'm not very impressed, um, but uh, maybe I was being too specific. But they they had to do options, you know, about the domain, right? You can mm. choose uh, uh, the archive, so the NLP came from, I mean, the data came from scientific literature. Mm. So I uh, using the arc phase, arc, arc, whatever. Anyway, so I don't know. I was just playing with it today, but. Uh, okay. I was looking to Bert as well, and Bert, you can do it in R yeah. with Keras. Oh yeah, so Bert, you can see is contextual um, embeddings. Yeah. So, so you are not diving into the bad stuff. <laughs> no, we are not. I thought we were joking. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, that's gonna be fun, but yeah. We'll see. Ah, okay. So, um, I also have um. And um, because, oh God, okay, maybe. Yeah, actually, I'm also working on the, my own text mining projects. Cause uh, okay. I have a one twin urban planner, planning scholar in this file. So I can keep yeah. working on those things. And then yeah. actually in R and then maybe, yeah, this one I'm not familiar with, but. There is also, I heard that there is a lot of uh, kind of a web-based text mining uh, oh, yeah. website that we can easily work on. Uh, and then, but I actually using just R. And then mm -hmm. I personally think that just kind of a, this one is, uh, this book actually deals with a very, very basic about the text mining technique. And then maybe for example, from the sentiment analysis word cloud that we saw in this chapter, I what I'm what I'm gonna try to do is uh, maybe in the later in this book we can also gonna learn about the topic modeling mm -hmm. kind of things, mm -hmm. and then based on the topic modeling we can uh, topic modeling process we can also do the how sentiment is the it, how what is the sentiment chain or differences in terms of the sentiment across the different topics? Oh, okay, you know? okay, yeah. That can be done by in R, like a, mm -hmm. like yeah. a topic one. Then mm -hmm. that what does that tell us is uh, maybe in case of the topic one, 
-hmm. most of the interview tends to be very negative feeling about the topic one. Maybe mm -hmm. on the other hand, in case of the topic maybe A, mm -hmm. they pe people talk about the positive thinking about the topic A. Mm -hmm. That means that we can find that there is a kind of differences, differences mm -hmm. pattern of the feedback, emotional feedback about the, each topic. Yeah. That so, is the more like a useful and mm -hmm. uh, sentimental analysis with the more implication. Yeah. Um, here I'm sharing one work that um, I'm currently doing is for creating and sentiment lexicons for um, our language. Um, so this is a tool, like for example, it's three different languages that we have here. So we upload the tags and people will do annotation. So they will basically annotate, for example, let me see. Uh... Okay. You made this? Oh, this is okay. So I think this one, okay, yeah. So this is the type of um, so given a sentence, you tag it as negative or positive. So this you submit, this is the guidelines, this is number of words, and um, yeah, so this is for tagging and um, creating sentiment lexicons uh, for three languages we are doing. So there is a tag also for uh, creating corpus for Twitter, and you will be given a tweet to classify a tweet as positive, negative, and neutral. So this is one task we are currently doing with me and my colleagues. Um, yeah. And yes, also can you, you guys built this app? Sorry? You built the app? Yes. Oh, so you That's, made it. <laughs> no, 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 no. So this is like um open, I mean, it's um uh tool that's being used um in industry for um yeah. But if you are academic, they give it for you free to use. So, yeah. So, like that, the name is like that. And so, for, for academics, they give it to you free to use. So, here, for example, I can define my tags. So, you can see I have many tags now uploaded. Our annotators are now there doing annotation and um, a lot of things. Um, yeah. So, we are annotated like 60,000 tweets. And um, Leila, you are, you were the one that told me about Twitter, and the, I'm now doing it. Uh, you remember our last book um, when we talked about I apply for academic. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the academic the developer's account. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, a process, right? Was, sorry. You have to put in. It was like you had to put in a grant proposal. Oh yeah, so I already <laughs> had I already had the a proposal. I mean, for, I mean, creating Twitter Scope? proposal. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Yeah, I have some. No, I, ha I completely made it mine up. I was like, I have, I just want to play. So I just <laughs> kept a project. Yeah, so so the cup is like, they give you like 10 million tweets per month. 10 million tweets. So. Yeah, they upped it. Before, it was very limited on what you could do. And then, yeah. so then my my boss paid, started paying the monthly yeah. subscription $99 a month. Wow. And then now they made it free. Well, what I used hmm. to get for $99 a month, yeah. you can get for free now. So the problem we had was this. Uh, you know, if you want to get tweet from Twitter, you can say, okay, give me tweet in English, give me tweet in Arabic, give, give me tweet in Portuguese. But our language, African language, the Twitter does not provide API to collect tweets. So we don't know Is how to- Is it in the meta? Is it like in the, can you find it in the attributes? So the like yeah yeah as a proxy like the you know how you put English like in your bio mm -hmm. like in your yeah. user profile settings because it gives you all the user profile information. Yeah yeah so 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 Twitter provide only thirty seven languages I guess but none of is from Africa these languages. Mm. <laughs> what? Yeah, so there is no way for us to get tweet from this. So what I do is like, I, what I did was like, okay, I create a stuff words for Africa for these languages we are doing. Now when I when I create this stuff word, I create like a vector with because if it is stop words, then it means in these languages these words appear often, right? So mm -hmm. given given tweet, there is probability that a particular stop word appear in that tweet, right? So, mm. so I create this top word. Now I create like a vector contain this top word. 
And now I search Twitter with all tweets with this top word, but the location is Nigeria. I mean, beyond my country life. Now all the tweets that have been returned, they turns out to be for that particular language. You get what I mean? Yeah. So the thing is when I was playing with it, the geo, the particular case that I had to apply was for, I had to do a, a geo, geospatial analysis. Yeah. Yeah. And I needed to see like in the state of Florida and the United States, yeah. the distribution of the tweets containing specific things. But the, 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 um, the quality of the data, geospatial data is very poor. On, on from what I could get, like we're, that's what that's exact that's what we were paying for essentially for that ninety nine dollars a month mm -hmm. to just be able to get the access mm -hmm. for you because that wasn't for that wasn't a free feature yeah and uh, it was uh, but then we, I did get it it was like very poor quality information and, and so I just gave up I didn't finish <laughs> maybe it's yeah. better now I haven't done Twitter in a long time I actually I'm going to start. And um, I think part of my dissertation work might involve Reddit. On Twitter? No, it might involve Reddit. Uh, Reddit. Um, for my for my dissertation work. Uh, so figuring it out. For me, for me and now I will be using Twitter because like I have access to a lot of data. I can do a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. I know. Reddit is so robust. It's yeah. I couldn't find a lot of uh, domain-specific information on Twitter. Uh, like people weren't talking about cancer; mm -hmm. they just weren't like tweeting about, <laughs> about cancer. And <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, it, it's, it was a little bit overambitious. The project oh, was yeah. a little overambitious because mm -hmm. we were trying to figure out like survivorship and trying to get like yeah. Uh, just kind of like a better understanding of the community voice, right? Mm -hmm. Because like people send like hospital send out surveys and so it's very official and can scare people. And there's a lot of people who are underinsured or uh, uninsured. And so like, are we really doing what we need to do in the community? But people don't talk about their sickness like that. But on <laughs> Reddit, they talk okay. about everything. They talk really? about everything. They talk about really? everything. Yes. Yes, uh, it's gross sometimes. It's really uh, bad. Okay. Yeah. Mm, all right. Okay. There's some really good studies around Reddit. Um, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so now you um let you are now doing NLP. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm dipping my toes. In yeah. The, all right. Um, I believe one way, one, one day you will, you, 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 you need to visit Python community because like um, NLP and the, uh... oh, so <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, I was like moving, shifting from the Python, but definitely if you are going to do the, the, not just text mining stuff like, but if you are core NLP, yeah, because that's yeah, the house. I know yeah. everything is most of the good libraries are in Python, but there are abstractions and people develop ways to do it in R, but, I, but it's more powerful to do with Python. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Yeah, one day R, one day R, R will also be at on far with I, I bought a course. I bought a course for learning Python. It's done. I'm going to start eventually, but I still want to go back. When I did R, once I started learning, I was like, this is so much better. This is so much better. <laughs> I, I, Python was my first programming language. Ah. Yeah, but that was, that was now 2021. Holy shit. That was like, oh, that was 10 years ago. Wow. <laughs> it was 10 years. I, I did Python 10 years ago. <laughs> and Kim, do you also use Python or only R? Um, I actually. Uh, using both ah. R and Python, and then oh. usually because I'm an urban urban planner, so okay. I actually tends to be use R for the, my special data analysis and you know, just kind of statistic in general, mm -hmm. and then a Python for the some kind of a GIS work. Kind of ah. a, there is a package called ArcPy, ArcPy, and then okay. yeah, some kind of a geo GIS automatic. Uh, geo processing or geo computation. 
And also, also, I'm, uh, I also try to use in R for the maybe some kind of machine learning. Mm. Yeah, R is actually very good for a lot of these things. Yeah. Except, yeah. except for um, as I'm as I'm going into the NLP space, yeah, it's still lacking a little bit, especially especially. For, so I love R for visualization. I love R for dashboards like Shiny and Flexible. Yeah, for data anything, analysis. Anything visualization wise, R I think kind of and data analysis. For, yeah, and for data analysis and just like it's just like interpretability of yeah. the language mm -hmm. is a lot better. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's as you can tell, no blue space is lacking a little bit. But tidy models. So mm -hmm. like we had Julia Silgate Silgate a couple of days ago, uh, actually a week almost a week ago for our ladies. Um, I saw you at tweet. Yeah, she was that was the workshop was amazing. Do and you have the recording? Really yeah, yeah I have the okay. recording. Send me um send I have actually a meeting right now, but um send me a message on Slack. I'll say I'll okay. the recording. The workshop okay. is really, really good and they're doing a lot. They're, they're continuously, you know, the tidy models book mm -hmm. club that mm -hmm. we're in, they're mm -hmm. constantly revising and rewriting the added more chapters and Cohort One yeah. still meets all the time. <laughs> but like she's constantly open to feedback and she mm -hmm. she told us that mm -hmm. the latest things that they're working with. It was a very good workshop. So I think like in terms of machine, like the machine learning in general and with R is, it's going to be basically aligned with Python. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. So tidy modeling, tidy model is like now on par with maybe um, psychic learn. So, so <laughs> now they can come to, yeah. But it is only on deep learning and stuff like that. They, are, they have gone far. <laughs> yeah, it's not there yet. So, anyways, I have to go, guys. I have another meeting. Okay. So, Bye. All right. Bye, all. So, yeah, see, you. See, you, see you all next week. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.